Well guys, today we're finally driving the Audi RS6 Avant. Very excited to share this one with you. We've got 22 inch wheels, Audi's aluminum four liter twin turbo V8, makes 591 horsepower, 590 pound feet of torque. <sighs> this is a proper wagon. Probably one of the coolest wagons ever built. It looks fantastic. There is so much technology and stuff built into this RS6. Starting price is $110,000. This one's specced up to about 120 grand. It's got air suspension, adjustable air suspension on all four corners. Lots of tech, rear steer, and a very spacious trunk area. No spare tire, unfortunately. I do miss having a spare tire just for that added layer of security, but probably prefer to fit a 22 inch wheel in here. Easily fold down the rear seats for a ton of cargo space. Those don't fold flat, but still you should be able to fit whatever you need to in this Avant. I love how low the loading floor is in this. Look how the lights react when you turn it on. That's awesome. All right, let's hop in. We'll start this thing up, show you around the inside. Take a look at the engine bay. Greeted by a lot of fun noises at startup. Super excited that the R6 is finally in the United States. We've got a lot of the corporate Audi design language in here. A lot of really nice finishes, beautiful materials, really well designed. I like the look of it. I think really the only mistake Audi has made here is there's a lot of gloss black plastic, though I think you might be able to get that in other materials. And this touchscreen interface is fine. It works well. It's reasonably responsive. Uh, I just miss Audi's old climate control dials. They, they had the coolest tactility to them. They had the coolest feel and they looked nice and they had this knurled finish and I don't know, I really like Audi's climate control knobs and they've completely nixed that, gotten rid of it, and everything's a touch screen. You can still get this haptic feedback from the screen, but it's just not the same. And it's just that much more distracting to use, but it is what it is and honestly, not a deal breaker. Um, we've got this nice infotainment, pretty standard for Audi these days, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, that's wireless too. We have a fantastic Bang & Olufsen sound system. We'll test that later on in this video. Fully digital gauge display. Uh, that changes when you hit the RS mode button. You can set it to not do that if you don't want it to. But we've got RS1, RS2, and uh, each one has varying levels of uh, customizability and you can kind of ramp up the settings. Right now I have my RS1 mode set to pretty much everything soft except for the engine and the exhaust note and then RS2 mode pumps everything up to Sport Plus or more dynamic. So everything stiffens up in the suspension, transmission, the rear limited slip is in uh, Sport mode. So we'll test that out on the road and see what it's like. And you can also hear it raises the idle just a little bit, giving you kind of that more aggressive feel at a stoplight. Kind of a bummer that it limits you at was that 3200 rpm but that's okay no uh no fun to be had when you're just sitting in neutral and you want to hear the exhaust two sunroofs front and rear these beautiful seats love the stitching the pattern you got your crumb collectors right there fresh with some crumbs from the previous loan and uh oh yes proper interior well done couple complaints but not a not a big deal not a deal breaker otherwise I think this is a very very special car to look at and experience let's show you guys in the back seat here too we've got a couple privacy shades manually operated and lots of interesting climate controls back here again all haptic touch USB-C ports in this RS6 we've got also a couple in the front center console here. Seat pockets, nice place to put a water bottle. Just a really solid interior. I think the majority of this car's cool factor comes from the fact that it just exists in the United States and that you can buy another fast wagon 
besides the E63. Sorry for all these bugs flying around, not much I can do about that. So, all aluminum, four liter, twin turbo V8. Like I said earlier, 591 horsepower, 590 pound feet of torque. Um, sure they left a little bit on the table and the aftermarket will sort out even more power from this unit. It is a uh, very capable engine. A little bit of turbo lag, but we will, uh, let's go experience that on the road for ourselves. Otherwise, I just love the way this RS6 looks. The fender flares, even these 22 inch wheels look really good. We have enormous brakes on this thing. Uh, 16 and a half inch rotors up front. 10 pot calipers. This is the steel brakes, not the carbon ceramics. Uh, with the steel brakes, you get the top speed of 156 miles an hour. With the carbon ceramics, it's 190. So that kind of unlocks some higher speed potential, removes the limiter, all that good stuff. These 22s are just huge. We're on Pirelli P0s. They're a little squealy, but again, we'll hear that on the road. I love these headlights. They're laser. They perform awesome. We've got a blacked out Audi badge right there. Blacked out RS6 logos down there. Okay, you guys know all about this thing already probably. There's been plenty of videos with way more beautiful cinematography. The beauty of POV is that it looks better driving. So let's do that. Love how solid the door closes in this RS6. You even get a little bit of an illumination around the seat belt. That's pretty cool. Standard Audi shifter, a decent reverse camera with turning lines. You can also do 3D where it'll show you around the car. You can kind of swipe around there, that's fun. Actually, let's go in and turn up this gauge brightness. Not really a good way to do this quickly uh, that I know of. You have to go into a couple settings. I mean, give us just a little slider on the side here, Audi. What's going on? What's up with all this touchscreen stuff? I'm over it. All right, let's go for a drive. Let's start off in the non-RS mode. So just normal driving mode. I think I've set the drive selection to auto. So it will just adapt to the driving scenario, but mostly things will just stay in comfort. This RS6 has surprisingly good ride quality. It rides like a luxury car, and uh, it just happens to be incredibly fast. But I'm very surprised to see how comfortable it is. This has double wishbone front suspension, four wheel steering, torque vectoring, rear differential. It can send 100% of the power in the rear axle to one side or the other. Um, varying torque splits front and rear. I mean, this thing should really handle. I've seen some track videos on this and it seems like it pretty much dials out the characteristic Audi understeer. And uh, the four wheel steer definitely helps to shrink the perceived size and weight of this RS6. And speaking of weight, <laughs> it's pretty freaking heavy. This is as heavy as makes no difference, 5,000 pounds. I believe the official curb weight is 4960. Uh, I've heard quotes around 4602, but on Audi's website it says 4960. Different cars with different specs may be different, but that's a pretty heavy car with all the safety equipment and just stuff that manufacturers have to jump through to build a car this size these days. That's what it adds up to be. But Audi's done a lot of work to hide that weight and make this just a better driving experience despite that curb weight figure. Um, one thing is the, the gross vehicle weight rating of this is over 6,000 pounds. I wonder if you could get that tax exemption in the Audi RS6 that you could usually with trucks and SUVs. Might be an option. This is a mild hybrid system. It will turn off when you come to a stop. Let's go into our RS modes here and open it up. Honestly, 
a very muted exhaust. I was expecting some more noise out of this thing. It's just, it's subtle. I'm sure it'd be great as a daily driver, but I'm kind of disappointed. I want some more volume out of my RS6. The turbos are just sucking all the volume out of that four liter V8. I'm sure it's awesome sounding from the outside and it's actually pretty loud, but all the sound insulation, all of the uh, refinement here is uh, keeping the volume down. I bet you can fix that with an aftermarket exhaust though. And uh, that's probably what most RS6 owners will be doing to be honest. Still, like, this is the sport exhaust. You would think Audi would have aggressively baffled it or done some type of thing where uh, it really opens up even more. The trade-off with that though is cruising on the highway, there is virtually no road or wind noise in this RS6. It is a dead silent experience. I mean, this almost feels like an S8 or something in terms of NVH, ride quality, and just comfort. It's amazing what they've been able to do. This adaptive air suspension gives you just a little bit of height variability. I think it's around an inch and a half of ride height change. You can go into your, I don't know, your vehicle settings and change that somewhere in a screen. Um, not going to do it now while I'm driving, but uh, it is nice to have that extra ride height change if you are in, driving in the snow or in the winter and uh, you throw some winter tires on your RS6 and you want to just go for a rip. <laughs> Zero to 60 in just over three seconds. This thing is fast. This is a quick, quick car. It really hides its speed. It really kind of just comforts you through the whole experience. This is a really incredible car that could cover great distances in great amounts of comfort. I was expecting a little bit more aggression out of this. Like I mentioned earlier, there's a tiny bit of turbo lag, about maybe half a second between when you put your foot down and the car responds. This eight-speed automatic though is quite good. Not as sharp as maybe some of the other units in the AMG products. But, you know, there is a sliding scale with these cars. And I haven't driven an M5 yet, but I feel like this RS6 probably fits somewhere in the middle. Let's do a launch control start, see what that's like. Sport mode, traction control off, RS2. Whoa! <laughs> That's a brutal launch. Oh man. A little bit of brake torque, boost off the line, and your brain just goes all mushy for the first 15, 20 miles an hour. <laughs> That'll never get old. That's awesome. When you put the transmission into sport mode, so you pull back on that lever, it'll give you just a little bit of a bump with every shift. Some people like that. I would prefer smoother shifts, but that's okay. Really light steering. Very fast ratio too, so you don't really have to put a lot of hand over hand motions into your low speed steering work, which is nice. This just gets the job done, but it gets it done pretty silently. I'm surprised.
bounce off the rev limiter. It's not quick to shift into the next gear. It will hold it there for a little bit. All right, let's see how this handles. A nice tight chicane here. Oh yeah, a lot of complaining from those Pirellis. Feels pretty good. I mean, you would not know that this is a 5,000 pound Audi. It does a nice job handling its weight and its uh, general weight distribution. I believe there's 55% of the weight up front, which actually isn't too bad. I'm sure this being a wagon helps that a little bit. I just drove an Audi S4 a few weeks ago and uh, definitely wasn't as exciting and dynamically enjoyable as this RS6. This is, uh, this is the next level for Audi. It really does a nice job kind of neutralizing the car. That four-wheel steer is, I think, necessary technology. All right, let's explore the handling a little bit more here. so capable we're gonna try to get this on track this week I don't know if it'll actually happen or not uh, but if we do we'll upload a video for you guys uh, the handling on this is pretty awesome I think I would probably upgrade the tires these Pirellis are a little bit noisy and complaining for my tastes for daily use though I'm sure you'd be just fine <laughs> so this is a different type of speed and uh, Audi RS product than I was expecting. Um, I really was kind of expecting something more along the lines of the naturally aspirated V8 RS5 level of hardcoreness um, from maybe 2015 or thereabouts. This is a different car. This is more luxurious, more comfortable, more subdued, and just kind of a little bit of a sleeper besides the obvious looks. Um, it's incredibly quick, but it's also incredibly comfortable. And that's something that maybe you don't get with the AMG and BMW products as much. And it's nice that this RS6 offers that. As a dynamic, exciting, thrilling vehicle, um, I think this would be a really nice daily driver. This would probably be the most comfortable and livable between the three, at least in my opinion. I mean, they're all going to be great. You can't really go wrong between this and the M5 and the E63, but pick your flavor. I know that Volkswagen Audi diehards are going to love this thing. An RS5 passed me the other day, and he, this, this guy and his wife were so excited and so pumped to see this RS6 on the road because you don't see a lot of these. They're not making a lot of them. They're pretty limited production. And uh, that is a really cool part about owning this car is just walking up to it and looking at it and experiencing it every day. I think there's just enough subtlety to the performance to make it enjoyable and exciting on a daily basis. Um, it's so refined that I don't really fault it for its more subdued nature but I think Audi could have gone a little bit more uh, to the extreme performance and, and enjoy driving enjoyment end with this car, giving us a little bit more of an exhaust note and uh, just sharpen things up a tad more on the stiff side of things. So if you really put the suspension into the, its full stiff mode, it would be nice to be able to uh, get a little bit less body roll out of the car and uh, some more volume and tactility out of the feedback here. You can go in and there are a bunch of different monitors and screens here to kind of tell you the temperature of everything. Uh, the temperatures don't really seem to be showing you actual units, but just colors, which is, I guess, just fine if you're on track and you're uh, checking things out. Here's where you adjust your, your ride height and your drive select. You can also edit your RS1 and RS2 modes in here. And you can see for RS2, we've got everything in the most aggressive setting. The 
because this is a wagon, you can just just hear how much air is being pumped out of the exhausts behind you. That open hatch just gives you that intake induction and exhaust noise, which is cool. Also, these steel brakes feel just fine. You're not going to have any complaints on these versus the carbon ceramics. And the carbon ceramics are $8,500. Uh, at that point, I think it's just showing off. <laughs> I'm not noticing that much of a difference in ride quality between the sport and comfort suspension modes. If anything, Audi could have dialed sport mode up just a little bit more and reduced the body roll on this RS6. Comfort's a little bit floaty, even. This 8-speed auto is really good, though it's not as sharp and direct crisp as uh, a dual clutch would be, but I don't know how well a dual clutch would cope with this amount of power. That rear sport differential really does a good job of putting that torque where it needs to go, torque vectoring to that outer wheel. These RS style gauges, when they change into the RS modes, are actually pretty cool. Your head-up display also changes to a different mode where you can see your RPM gauge a lot easier. All right, well, I think that is a good initial summary of the RS6. Um, pretty fun to drive, actually. Surprisingly fast. Um, very capable. This is one of the best handling Audis I think I've ever driven. And uh, I'm glad to see that Audi has really put the work into the suspension and the drivetrain and the four-wheel steer. And the dynamics of this car are surprisingly good for how big and heavy it is. And the fact that it's a wagon and that it exists here is just reason enough to get one if you want one, I think. Um, I'm a little bit disappointed in... The exhaust note, I want just a little bit more volume, but again, you can solve that in the aftermarket. Not a deal breaker, not a big deal. These screens uh, are what they are, and the rest of this car is just so cool. So anyway, those are my thoughts on the RS6. I might do another video on this later this week. We'll see. Um, if you want to stay tuned for the Bang & Olufsen sound system test, stick around. Otherwise, we'll just walk you around this car one more time, and uh, you can be on your merry way. And idle, the exhaust does sound good in RS2 mode. <laughs> These tips. Jeez. <laughs> this is a massive, massive wagon. I would 100% get this over any of the SUV offerings. It's a heck of a lot cheaper than a comparable Porsche Panamera. So even though it's expensive, it's actually kind of a good deal. Even at 110 or 120 grand. All right, let's go into Apple CarPlay here. We will find our sound system playlist and uh, test this bad boy out. We do have a volume knob and a track selection knob. You just click right and left. So that's good.
All the steering wheel controls in this R6 are pretty straightforward and easy to use. No strange haptic feedback. They just, they're buttons, but they're kind of hidden buttons and integrated into this panel right here. I do like this Bang & Olufsen sound system. I think you can adjust it and kind of tailor it to your preferences. It sounds really nice with satellite radio too. All right guys, well that's it for this one. Uh, let's see if we can hit this entrance ramp up here and that'll be a wrap. How can you not love a fast Audi?